Everybody, welcome back to Climate Transformed and our weekly synopsis, which we I will confess we are doing it early this week because we have a bunch of stuff on. Uh, but I am with uh, McKenna Avery, our new guru host, who actually, for everyone who didn't see it today, actually did her, piloted her first event. Uh, McKenna, congrats. It was awesome. Um, it was sort of fun. We did a couple of things this week. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about biochar and lawyers uh, from Stanford? Yeah, absolutely. So really exciting. On Tuesday, we had Brian Eagle. He's the CEO of Glanris, and he is using a biochar medium that he has patented and created uh, biocarbon. So that's his name for the technology. He's using rice husks as the as the kind of source of it. And it was interesting to learn because I hadn't known this, but uh, rice husks are the biggest uh, ag waste going on right now. And I, I just assumed there was, you know, some more out there, but that was, that was good to learn. And there is some massive potential there as far as carbon sequestration goes. Um, it was estimated about like 0.5 to two gigatons of CO2 per year by, uh, 2050 by bar biochar at a cost of like 30 to a hundred dollars per ton of CO2. So there was uh, there was some massive potential for this. It is newer. They aren't completely uh, launched yet, and the the, the tech is um, still being piloted. But it is it, there is some support for it. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think that there's you know again mother mother nature you know she might be she might be getting a kick, bit of a kick in the pants from we humans, but she's uh, she still is undefeated. And I find it just amazing how whether it's you know there's issues of, of rice husk. Um, Hemp is another thing which is talked talk to have some sort of absorption qualities of CO2. Um, and I think that, you know, biochar is one, again, we've got to have, you know, we've got to have dozens and dozens and dozens of solutions. And I, and I, I, um, I, I, I know you and I've had this conversation, but it, I really push back whenever I hear a VC talk about only investing in things that can take a gigaton of this and a gigaton of that. Guys, we just need, no, what we need is dozens and dozens and dozens of solutions because putting all your eggs in one basket on something that we think can extract a gigaton if it doesn't work properly. And let's face it, the world is littered with really shitty sequestration projects that don't work well and have really high, uh, you know, net marginal cost. Um, you know, we need to try everything. So I, I think that Brian, you know, Brian was a great conversation. Um, and, you know, I think it's, you know, again, the way I think about this is that we shouldn't think about climate challenges as a series of trillion dollar solutions. We need to think about it. And this is the, the real opportunity set for innovators and investors, that they, there are thousands of billion dollar opportunities. Um, and again, I don't know how successful rice husks will be, but if it, it can play a, a part in multiple solutions, um, you know, for me, that's the way, that's the way forward. Um, and then you're someone I think you found actually. You know, you know Molly, or or you brought Molly on. Molly Mellis, who is the um, the director of lawyers for a sustainable economy at Stanford. Um, I think that's that she had. No, she had a very long title. Um, <laughs> talk, talk a little bit about what Molly what Molly was what Molly had to say. A lot around legal frameworks and the like. I you know it's it's something which I find you know. On the surface, it sounds really boring. Um, but look, climate you know climate innovation doesn't work without proper legal frameworks. Absolutely. And she did cover that too in, in the way that the legal system and how you typically run a startup, we really focused on environmental startups, the different obstacles that they face when trying to get to market. And it's it's awesome. She's working with like a climate tech marketplace for local in, impact investing, decarbonizing, um, decarbonizing HVAC and energy efficiency and computing and uh, wind turbine design. That's just to name a few, but they started this initiative where they offer these green startups pro bono services and in exchange for nothing um, besides them making a huge difference, right, with the potential to. And they started this just a few years ago, and they've already provided $55 million in pro bono services to these green startups. Um, right. That's really helped in their success because otherwise those legal fees just add up and takes down oh. really a green startup, especially if it's prior to funding, all of that. Um, and what really stood out to me was the, the issues of lack of pre precedent that come with uh, a lot of these green startups. There's just the regulations there and like the, the legal frameworks aren't up to date as they should be. 
when it comes to this technology. And then also it was a question that I wanted to pose to you too. She was kind of wondering if there is any hesitation for a lot of investors when they see, you know, B Corp status rather than the, the typical C Corp. Is there any you know, questioning and is there any? I don't know. I think I think it is about it is optics and nothing and nothing more. I mean, I you know, I'm not. I don't know if the B Corp structures have been challenged in court. If there's ever been, I don't know of a scandal or a fraud within that sort of thing, which would be the only reason why you would take something like this to court. Um, so I know I don't. I don't. I do think it does have. Um, you know, look at the early stage. It does have sort of potential because you can raise money from nonprofits and the like. So I, 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 I have to check this with, um, with the folks over at Rocky Mountain Institute. But I, I'm not. I think that they still they prioritize B Corps, something like that. Um, you know, but I think it. Look at the end of the day, C Corp, B Corp, LLC. It doesn't really matter. It's about it's about the tech. Um, and just sort of square the circle in the conversation. You'd rather have that fifty-five million dollars going into going <laughs> spend it on scientists and and, exactly. uh, and innovators. Uh, development. Rather than, yeah, rather than uh, rather than lawyers. So um, and yes, and I'm I'm sort of back on the horse. Uh, you know, I'm, for everyone, probably everyone is quite relieved that I haven't been sort of my face and pop been all over climate transform the last couple of weeks because I'm obviously busy doing um, our BCM event, which is. Um, yeah, you know, I couldn't be prouder of this. Um, but in the meantime, between now and then, we've got, um, speaking of the Rocky Mountain Institute, uh, we have a conversation about uh, sustainable aviation fuel uh, with um, with two analysts from, from RMI. Um, you know, the each, look, of the, of the 16 sectors, 17 odd sectors that we cover within Climate Transform, the one that I'm most deeply sceptical about, about the decarbonisation process is aviation. Um, you know, sustainable aviation fuel is about point. Well, it's point one of one percent of all uh, of all um, fuel consumed, um, and yet you've got every CEO of every airline in the world um, getting up and pledging net zero by 2050, which, frankly, I think is bullshit. <laughs> is in the, is the short answer. Um, it's all marketing, um, and uh, you know the the conversation I'm going to have with. Um, with you know, with uh, with Cyrus Tab, who's the, the head of research at uh, at RMI, um, is is going to be a pretty sobering conversation about the future of about the future of uh, of sustainable aviation fuel, whether it's um, whether it's um, uh, whether it's e fuels um, predominantly driven by a hydrogen a hydrogen style process or or biofuels, which doesn't really have the scale. Um, it's a little bit sobering, um, but look, these guys. You know, for those of you who don't know RMI, it's one of the oldest um, uh, seeding uh, nonprofits you know, in the world, um, out in Colorado, designed to fund for the last fifty years um, climate change startups. Uh, an amazing organisation, um, and that's hopefully the first of what will be many conversations with the team at RMI. Yeah, that's very exciting, and. With VCM coming up, I wanted to hear what the kind of conversations you're most excited for as we have a packed agenda for two days. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which way I don't know which way is up at the moment. Um, but I, you know, I'll give you I'll give you an example. So we so I was lucky enough to have a, an hour-long conversation with Maggie Kim this morning, who's the CEO of the CEO of, uh, of Gold Standard. Um, and you know, Gold Standard and Vera get get a get a they get a hard time publicly about about sort of the complexity of standards, they 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 do things very differently. You know, gold standard doesn't believe in red projects. Um, there it does. Um, you know, there's a, a slew of a slew of differences. No one, and but no one denies the complexities of trying to verify whether a ton of carbon in a in a Ghanaian in a Ghanaian forest is the same as a, a ton of carbon in the Amazon. Right? This this stuff's really hard. Um, and you know, and I came away from the conversation with Maggie just so reassured and uplifted because you know she makes a very good point that you know no no part of the climate tech infrastructure, which you know, which let's face it, you know, offsets are a bridge to a decarbonized future, right? Um, no segment of climate tech gets more gets more vilified or more attention or has more transparency. Um, despite everything that we hear, than the voluntary carbon markets. Um, you know, you don't have these regulations around hydrogen. You don't have these regulations around ag tech. Right? You don't have this um, uh, these sort of regulations around, um, you know, around around bio biofuels or batteries. Um, you know, these these this is you know the 
you know, there's the standards for voluntary for carbon offsets have been evolving over over twenty over twenty plus years, um, and it's um, you know I think it's uh, you know it's 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 good that you know it's great that you know look no one denies that VCM doesn't have teething problems even after twenty years. Um, the reason we chose the phrase gold rush is because there's a lot of negative connotations to a gold rush. Um, but I, I, look, I think Maggie's one of Maggie. So we're going to be interviewing both David Antonioli, the, the CEO of Vera and the C, and Maggie, the CEO of, uh, of gold standard. Um, and look, they're the ones, if, you know, if you want to think about the true direction of, of where offsets are going and whether we can fulfill this potential $300 billion, billion potential um, by 2030, um, look, these two folks are going to be front and center of the front and center of the whole thing. Yeah, and I, I'm mo- I'm so excited to just get the whole view of VCM. You know, you hear sound bites here and you read these articles, but I feel like with the the breadth of knowledge from our various speakers, we'll really get into what's actually going on right now instead of you know what we hear too late. <laughs> yeah, if we if we can't if we can't give people a couple of snippets of information after 28 hours over two days, um, and a confession probably I won't get through all 28 hours. It's a lot. It's a lot of content. Um, so, um, but look, there's something there for, for everybody, every part of the ecosystem. Transparency, trading, ratings, um, issues over over project management, supply, blockchain. Um, yeah, we're covering we're covering all the bases. Yeah, well, exciting. It- there are some events in September that for daily content. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about? We've got. A, we've got. A, uh, yeah. What do we? What do we got in September? Oh, uh, my bit. My big one in September is with um, uh, with S2G. Um, so, which was formerly uh, Builders, um, which is the largest private, um, the largest private climate uh, tech fund in the world. Uh, it is the Luke Walton family office. Um, and we are hopefully starting a collaboration with S2G to talk about their roles what, and talk to a lot of their portfolio companies. You know, one of their high-profile ones that they've invested in is uh, is Brimstone, which is the green the unicorn green cement company. Uh, but that's going to be one of uh, many. I think we've got thirty odd hours now. Well, sorry, with with VCM we've got forty odd hours scheduled in September, so we're on our path to to 500 so but McKenna thank you congrats on today it was awesome um and everyone (laughs) great so everyone um uh register for the VCM event at climatetransform.com and McKenna and I will see you next week bye